Hello, this is Scott. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where I cover a variety of different data science and analytics topics, including open discussions, uh, uh, demos in software, both commercial and open source. Today we're going to be talking about open source R, and we're continuing on with this graphic series using <clears throat> the uh, graphics package, Lattice, Lattice Extra <clears throat> packages um, from Sarkar. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things that I want to do is make sure that I load the libraries from, from last time. We covered um, the Hexbin uh, package, as, and we plotted some stuff. We used the inverse uh, hyperbolic sign in, in lieu of the um, log function. Um, and so today we're going to talk about, very quickly, a scatter plot and SPLOM. So SPLOM is the... Um, the uh, package to do uh, scatter plot matrices. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and execute these libraries. And then um, we're going to use this violent crime data. So if you do help US arrest, you can look at what this data is about. And so the first statement is just doing basically all the columns in, in the data. So uh, with no labels or anything else. So I can see here how powerful SPOM is, is <clears throat> for the entire uh, data frame. I can look at these four variables um, and get an idea of how they're, how they're related. If I want to um, provide some labeling, I can use this PS scales for simple um, labeling. And I'm going to create a, uh, uh, a, a a trellis or a, basically a scatter plot matrix uh, here. And um, so by the different regions and in the order of the regions using uh, uh, columns. And so north, central, west, northeast, and south now. So I now have basically the same data, but instead of it all at a high level, I now got it by by regions, right? And and this is where I pick up that that variable. All right, so SPOM by itself will do all of the continuous variables. You can specify categorical uh, data and plot that out. Next data set I'm going to use quickly is this Motor Trend card test. <clears throat> so it's US 1974 Motor Trend 7374 models. You can see I've got a number of continuous variables here. Um, I'm going to use miles per gallon displacement, horsepower, um, and the rear axle ratio weight and <clears throat> the um, uh, quarter mile time, Q seconds. And so I'm going to fit this, classify this data in as part of the SPOM function. Um, I'm going to create groups by cylinder. So I think it's uh, four, six, and eight. And then I'm going to give it some variable names and this auto key. So um, if I do that, I get a nice overlay. I've now got a categorized plot by cylinder again. So this is where the groups is cylinder. So um, they're denoted by category, by color. So four cylinder is blue, six cylinders magenta, and eight cylinder is uh, green. And I can look at the relationships miles per gallon. For example, with quarter mile time, obviously the uh, the eight cylinders perform better in um, the quarter mile time, but then they consume more gas. And so that's one of the powers of looking at these plots is the relationship between pairwise variables. And <clears throat> we will see later a way to interact with these with these scatter plot uh, matrices, but it is a uh, this is just a quick example. The, the power is being able to create these very quickly, look at bivariate relationships, two variable relationships. The downside of these is you cannot see higher dimension relationships. And so we will be getting into some ways to, to visualize that. And certainly I've covered a variety of different machine learning topics on there. All right. So I'm going to stop there. Hopefully you can join me next time. We'll be talking about parallel plots. Thank you.